Hey, it's Azure Friday. Welcome. Scott Guthrie. Great to be here. Since you're the guy that kind of orchestrates Azure at a certain level, what is it exactly? Is it just a bunch of data centers or is it more than that? Well, you know, at a high level, Azure is uh, kind of Microsoft's cloud computing platform. And so it's, it's many things. It's uh, a bunch of services that we provide, mm -hmm. um, things like hosting virtual machines or web apps or data, things like that. Uh, it's also a bunch of physical infrastructure that we have deployed around the world, uh, which um, basically runs the, the, the network, the fiber, and the servers uh, to actually host all these services and let you run your apps on them. Would you call it like a cloud OS? Like, I mean, I think about Azure as being one thing, five-letter word, but it's it's there's like a, there's a global operating system that's kind of managing it all, the health of the entire system. Certainly, this, the the software stack we kind of call uh, cloud OS. Oh yeah. Um, we literally oh. use that term, and um, uh, and so you know, and it starts really. Uh, you know, the fun thing about you know some of the stuff on our team is is literally it starts at the network level and at the base hardware level, mm. um, and it goes all the way up to the pixels. And so, you know, we have our own software-defined networking stack that we use inside the data centers to coordinate. So we don't have uh, you know physical routers. We actually use uh, software-defined routers as much as possible. Wow. Um, we have our own storage system. We have you know we use the Windows hypervisor, um, but you know we have lots of custom stuff around it. So it really is kind of a, a pretty pretty large advanced distributed system. It's got a big global Windows OS. Yep. And our goal is to basically take that cloud OS that we're using to host our own data centers and also ship it so that you can run it inside yours as well. And so you know, a lot of the Windows Server 2012 R2 release that just mm -hmm. came out, um, a lot of that infrastructure has a lot of commonality with what we've built in Azure. And you're going to see over time more and more consistency across what you can run inside your data center or another third party hoster's data center and what we're running in ours. Ours is probably a much larger scale, right? Um, but we think that consistency is important because we know that sometimes people want to be able to run it on their own hardware that they manage as well. So inside an Azure data center are, are racks and racks of computers. And yep. I might have a company with racks and racks of computers. I could have my own internal kind of Azure packed cloud mm -hmm. with my own Azure internal portal and make virtual machines and, and websites. Yeah, so, so we have this thing we call the Windows Azure Pack, uh, which uh, just released um, in October okay. as part of the Windows Server release. Uh, it's a free download on top of Windows Server. And it it's gives free. you, it's free. Um, uh -huh. okay. uh, and it runs on top of Windows Server and System Center. Uh -huh. um, and it basically provides the exact same Windows Azure HTML portal that you're familiar with if you've ever logged into windowsazure.com. Sure. Uh, and um, it basically lets you say new VM, new website, new database new service bus, uh, and it will run on top of Windows Server, and you know you can even have two or three servers running inside your company, and you could use that Windows Azure pack against it. Uh, and the goal is, you know, it just it's the same consistent APIs, it's the same consistent management tools, you can use Visual Studio to develop against it, and then those same apps you can then also deploy inside our cloud hosted on Windows Azure. Very cool. Um, I went onto the web and searched for a picture. I just I just searched for Azure Data Center. Mm -hmm. Is that is that representative? Is that reality? These look these look like shipping containers. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm trying to parse these in real time. Um, Sorry to drop it on you, but no. I just I went and searched Azure Data Center, and I, I get the idea that there's a whole bunch of racks, and I, I understand that they move them around in shipping containers, and they live in these big. Um, football fields worth of warehouses of stuff. Yeah, so the basically, so we have a number of what we call generations of data centers. I think one of the fascinating things about the cloud is just how fast it's moving. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, some of our, we have a notion we call regions first, even before we get to data centers, which are basically clusters of data centers around the world. Mm -hmm. And so actually if you go to one of those slides, the next slide shows you um, places that we have regions around the world. Anything that's a dark circle represents a region. Uh, mm. And so we've got um, several regions in North America. Mm -hmm. um, we've got several regions in Europe. We've got a bunch of regions in Asia. And we've announced, for example, two new regions in Japan, two new regions in Australia. We have two active now in China, and we have one in uh, Singapore and Hong Kong. Uh, and a region um, basically means we have 
at least one data center, often multiple, mm -hmm. that are close together and that logically look like a single data center that you deploy your apps into. Oh, wow. And so when you build an app or a service in Azure, you can basically choose to deploy into any of the regions around the world. And the exact same APIs, exact same code work everywhere. And so typically you deploy in a region uh, that's close to where your customers are um, or maybe close to where you are. Um, and if you want to, you can actually deploy the same app across multiple regions. So for example, your uh, customers in Asia would go against an Asia data center, customers in Europe would go against a Europe data center, customers in the US would go against a US data center. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, you know, just from a latency uh, speed perspective, is a way that you can actually get kind of global reach with very good performance. So a region is, is a region a data center? Like if I hit West US, is that one building or is that a region is N data yeah. centers? Depends on the region. All of our US regions now uh, have multiple data centers. Hmm. And so yeah, if you go back to the, the, that, uh, the screenshot, so that might be, is an example of what one data center might look like. Mm -hmm. And so it's you know, multiple football fields worth of size. Yeah. Um, and within this typically, uh, depending on the region, um, uh, there might be kind of what we call colos or might be actually firewall separated regions mm -hmm. uh, within it um, for kind of firewall, fi literally fire protection, not actually- When you actually say firewall, security. you're saying like literally like, literally this part of the building goes away, that part of the building's yeah. fine. Yeah, so you know, typical data center will have firewalls, again, not in the security sense, but often you know, the physical sense. And the idea is if there was a bad fire, the firewall is usually rated for about four hours to survive. And so the idea is you know, the fire department could arrive and put out the fire before then. Hmm. Uh, and and that's, that's one of the things about the data center design is you got to, with an area this big, if there was a disaster, how do you contain it? Uh, and then basically within each of these areas, often we have containers. This is sort of an older design. So this is our old Chicago design, where we'd have containers, and then each container basically has, you know, up to a couple thousand servers. Wow. And so, yeah, so it's different kind of, you know, and, and part of the reason we use containers in that model is we can kind of wheel them in and wheel them out as a unit. Um, uh, other uh, data centers, and I can't quite tell if this one's under construction, or this might be one of our open air data centers. We actually have areas where um, one of the things we're trying to do with the data centers is how do we use as, as little power as possible, or, mm -hmm. or a bit more precisely, uh, utilize the power as effectively as possible. And so, you know, cooling is one of the things that we have to focus a lot on, and we want to try to spend as little money as possible, as little power as possible having to cool it. So we're using things like uh, open air so that we can actually use wind power or air power cooler um, to cool it. Um, Wow. So you you would basically say why put a build, why put a a roof on top of a data center if it's going to stay hot? Let the air cool it. We often put roofs on them uh, just because it freaks people out if you don't have a roof. <laughs> um, but we will often have um, uh, the sides open yeah. in in some of them yeah. so that we can actually use natural air to actually help cool it a little bit. Now the servers aren't sitting out in the open air. Yeah, of course. So it's, it's the management. They're, they're units. in the boxes. Um, uh, and so, but it but it is one of the things that we're trying to do from uh, an efficiency perspective is is literally use as little power as possible. Um, and that's one re reason why you know costs keep going down is the data centers that are built today versus the data centers even two or three years ago versus five or ten years ago. Um, are much, much, much more efficient. And um, you know, that, the ability to kind of get hundreds of thousands of servers in one place, cooled and powered in a very efficient way, you know, translates into real hardware savings. Very cool. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to dig into specific services that are available on Azure uh, in future videos in just a few minutes. And I also want to thank everyone for uh, the... <laughs> box you're standing on. <laughs> the, box, the box I'm standing on because I'm actually really quite about shorter than he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's Azure Friday.